Good afternoon, everyone. I'm just going to wait for a few minutes till Genevieve can pop on. Hi, Izzy. Hey, guys. There she is. Hi. Genevieve. It's gorgeous outside. It is. Um, I'm hiding inside. I, uh, <laughs> I borrowed my friend's office. <laughs> uh, John, so. On a uh, phone call in there, so I figured I'd hop out here to have a little quiet. <laughs> Very cool. So um, just going to wait a few minutes here before so people can get on. Sure. Um, if you can help me out, I've, I kind of just have like a, um, a quick outline and, and uh, overview, and then I'll give our announcement and let people know how they can help and that kind of a thing. But yeah. if you can help me by, by tracking any questions that people have. Of course. And that way we can make sure nobody gets, uh, we want to make sure everyone gets a chance to ask a question. So sure. sound good? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, everybody. Hello. Everyone who's saying hello. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. What I try to do is um, use a screen capture later and then put this on Facebook, too. Okay. So I've done that before. I did that when I was at the, um, the um, Senate Judiciary Committee hearings and I was able oh, to nice. do that. Yeah. So I, I, I'm fingers crossed. I think we can do it. <laughs> All right. Ready? Ready. So I'm excited. I'm butterflies and nervous in the way. Um, and the first thing I want to do is just thank everybody for your support and uh, just say solidarity during this time of um, weird pandemic in the United States. And I just want to say that um, my heart goes out to everybody. Um, no matter you know what you're going through, we're in this together. And that really was. Um, kind of a push for me to launch Hold My Guns and to do it sooner than later. Um, and I'll explain how we're, we're going to be doing that in a moment. Um, I also acknowledge that there are people who are new to Hold My Guns and they might not know what, what it's about. So I want to start there um, and just explain that um, Hold My Guns' mission is to connect responsible firearm owners with voluntary, private, off-site storage options through our national network of partnering gun shops and FFLs during times of mental health crisis or personal need. To be human is to go through ups and downs in life. We believe that times of hardship should be met with an outpouring of compassion and camaraderie, not fear-mongering and an abrogation of constitutional rights. So I just want to start out by saying that, that our heart is to protect constitutional rights and to provide an option for off-site storage for people, whether it's in a time of mental health crisis or personal need. And that personal need can mean anything from being deployed and being concerned about having firearms in the home, um, being concerned about people having access to them that's not authorized, or maybe even the, the grandkids are coming in and you just need temporary storage, or maybe your house is for sale. Um, and so it, in addition to helping to prevent suicide, which is a, a big, you know, that's, that's why we started. Um, it also helps to protect, to pre prevent accidental shootings and theft. Um, and it's, I want to point out that this is a non-legislative option. There are many um, legislators who are trying to come up with new gun control laws to address some of these concerns. But Genevieve and I firmly believe, and both of us uh, work in the gun community, we genuinely believe that it is our responsibility to give an answer to these concerns that is non-legislative um, and also to provide um, a sense of community and, and compassion and offer safety um, in, in answering this question. So I'm excited. That's our mission. Um, like I said, it started because um, a friend of mine took her own life with a firearm. And in investigating what do you do in a situation like this when it might not be wise to have access to firearms in the home in a crisis, um, I, I found out that you really can't just give a firearm to a friend. 
which is what a lot of mental health professionals who have no familiarity with firearms, that's what they say. Well, just give your firearm to a friend. But that's illegal here in Pennsylvania unless that friend has a license to carry a firearm. And even then, um, I realized that uh, not everyone who has a license to carry has adequate storage. And even if people have adequate storage, um, you might not want to tell your um, if even if they do, you might not want to tell that person about the the crisis that's going on in your home. And so it was very important to come up with a solution that protected people's privacy and that was professional. And there's no better place to do that than in gun shops. They're already set up. They have storage. They are um, an FFL. They can handle the, the transaction. Um, and they really care about protecting rights. And so rather than, you know, turning it into a police station or whatnot, um, which is this is important for someone maybe in law enforcement who might be struggling with mental health concerns, that they can take their firearm to a gun shop and have some privacy and store it and get the help that they need. Our goal in, the, in a mental health crisis storage situation is to provide an avenue for people to get the help they need and keep their private situations private before they become public ones. So initially, our intention was to launch um, in pockets across the United States, starting here on the East Coast, and to do, um, you know, have, have a launch party that had food trucks and some sponsors and, and things like that, and to really make it fun. And I have every reason to believe that as the um, coronavirus crisis starts to dissipate, that we will be able to do that. But I also heard um, President Trump's speech um, this past week, and he mentioned, you know, with the economic crisis, um, that, that he believed that there will be an increase in suicides. And that just really, um, it hurt to hear that, but I know that it's true. And as I read uh, news stories, um, different um, communities, they are saying that they're seeing an increase in suicide. And so I talked with my Hold My Guns team, um, which they're wonderful. Genevieve uh, is, you know, she's she's part of our team. Um, we also have Ken Hauer from Green Mountain Defense and a very good friend, uh, Matt Blank, who has a background in psychology. Um, and I talked to my team and I said, you know, we could do this grandiose launch and have a lot of fun with it because I believe this is something to celebrate. Or we could just launch across the United States and the gun shops who want to participate and who are able to participate, then they're free to do that. Um, and I also want to say I was encouraged to hear that the Second Amendment was protected. Um, there's There's been some um, excellent work by the firearms community to bring it to a federal level of attention that we need to be able to purchase firearms and ammunition in times like this. And so many governors, including here in Pennsylvania, uh, we have a governor who's generally against um, <laughs> the Second Amendment. He's always fighting against it. Um, even he even he deemed that gun shops were a necessity. And so I want to point out that in addition to providing this um, storage option um, for the public who needs it, this is a really great opportunity for gun shops because it, it's a value add to their business. Um, they're not uh, simply able to stay open and sell firearms during this crisis time, but they're also able to say, you know what, we're also offering this suicide prevention service. So it really does add value to um, their business and, and bringing in um, not only customers, but also to underscore the value of um, gun shops in the community in ways that we can give back. So I'm excited to be providing that service and that boost to our industry during this time as well. So the big thing, uh, our big announcement, and, and this is what we <laughs> had been waiting for, is that we um, have our uh, we have our insurance. And yeah, hey, it's Finally. so exciting. Finally. And so um, we had been waiting to hear um, about insurance. And when we first presented the information about what we're doing to um, our insurance agent, who happens to work in the his several clients in the firearms industry, he presented the information to the underwriters and um, they said, no one's, no one's doing this. <laughs> and so we really aren't sure how to insure you. And so it took actually a couple months to really um, 
you know, have our insurance agent make presentations to different underwriters. Um, but what we have now is an excellent coverage package. And so that is was kind of the linchpin for our being able to launch. And um, as of yesterday, we have insurance coverage. So that was really the key in um, even being able to sign anybody up to be a storage partner was to ensure that our liability was um, covered. And that's, that's very important to us to reduce liability to our storage partners. We know that they are taking on some risk to do this. And um, so it's always been our hope to be, um, you know, to, to reduce that liability and that risk. And having insurance is really important. So the next step in rolling out the launch is that on Friday, I will be contacting those who have contacted us interested to be storage partners, FFLs. Um, and I will be sending them an email with some documents in it. And let me just tell you a little bit about that. Um, we will, that, that email will contain our storage partner agreement. So it's the agreement between us and the storage partner, a customer fixing agreement so that um, it, it can outline, you know, what the expectations are um, and also to have, um, you know, an understanding of how the process works. And the other thing that we have included in there is a waiver. And I want to um, just shout out to Joshua Prince um, he is our attorney here in Pennsylvania, and he um, not only helped to, he not only wrote up this, these wonderful rock solid documents, um, he also helped us to fundraise to offset those costs, which is just incredible. Um, so I just really want to say that we couldn't do this without him. Um, the next step is after, um, oh, there's one other thing that's really important. Um, the, other, the other thing that's going to go out to our storage partners is a community survey. Um, and so I want to talk a little, little bit about that real quick. Um, you know, what is this community survey and why is it important? So the community survey, in addition to asking um, information about our storage partners to get an idea of, you know, how much storage space do they have? Um, do they have a classroom if we were to hold events, that kind of a thing? We want to find out a little bit about the needs and their personal communities, um, like do they have a food bank? Are there parks there? Um, and, and learning a little bit about the demographics in their community. And the reason why that's really important, it's not just that we're trying to, to gather information about our storage partners, but although we are, but the intent of that is to come up with ways that our gun shops can then really shine in our communities. And as we put together our nonprofit and we um, put together funds for an endowment and grants, what we want to do is to partner with industry leaders and to be able to um, give grants to our gun shops that they can help, for example, stock a whole uh, food bank or to do repairs um, for a community park and to really, you know, to put up to also recruit people in their stores so to help with community projects. So for example, the way that we visualize that to happen is um, as people come in, they might be a storage customer. They might want to just go to the gun shop because they're regular there. Um, but the our gun shops can say, hey, we're going to be volunteering to do this community project. We have a grant from this um, firearms manufacturer to do this. We're really excited. Can we count on you to help with this community project? And that makes everybody look good. But it's also very important for helping with uh, mental health issues. And the reason why is because a lot of times when people are discouraged, um, a, a big thing that they are really craving is a sense of connection and community. And so what better way to create that connection and community than to bring wonderful people in from the gun shop in order to help meet the needs of the community and to get positive recognition for that. The other important aspect of um, the survey is to learn a little bit about the classroom space that um, the gun shops have. A lot of times gun shops have classrooms that are used for things like uh, first aid seminars or legal seminars pertaining to firearms, that sort of a thing. But as we start to look at some of the underlying issues, why someone might have some um, suicidal ideations or feelings of discouragement and depression, um, there are other factors there that need to be addressed. 
Um, for example, finances is a big one. Um, have marriage issues, um, parenting concerns, um, support while your loved one is, a deplo is deployed, things like that. And so what we really want to do is to open up the, the gun shop classrooms as a place where those types of events can be held. And from speakers who are um, 2 a friendly, there is not a lot of stigma to say, I'm going to go to the gun shop uh, and, and go listen to the local accountant who can help work um, my budget and, and make sure that our family has the, the funding that we need. There's no stigma to that. But if you say I have to go to the welfare office to get a seminar, to go to the seminar, there's, that's kind of embarrassing. So what we want to do is to bring to a high risk demographic, which, um, it, again, it's, it's men who are ages 40 to 65 are a higher risk for suicide, especially by firearm. Um, to bring that information right to the high risk group in a way that's palatable and gives them dignity and, and gets the information that they need and presented in a setting that is comfortable and also that promotes um, retaining rights. And again, our goal in this too is to promote a liberty lifestyle and to help people get the help they need before their, their smaller problems become bigger ones. We want to start to um, help with su suicide prevention at the root of its cause and, and to be able to answer some of these needs, again, in a setting that is encouraging to people. Um, so I'm excited. That's a little bit about the community survey. And um, our goal then is to receive that information back um, from our, our uh, gun shops. And then as we receive that information, there'll also be uh, reviewing it with their attorneys and they will be upgrading our procedure to meet any state and local laws that needs to be compliant and so they will send that information back to us and then we can give them our stamp of approval to green light um, once that happens we can add them to our website and then people can start to search and find a location near them so that's it in a nutshell um, these endeavors of course um, you know, they, they, I was a little bit hesitant, honestly, to launch because um, we are still in early stages of fundraising. But I really believe that the importance of this mission is one that, you know, rather than just waiting for everything to be perfect and beautiful and, and glossy and camera ready, that it's really important that we get this out there while there's a need. And so um, please bear with us as we, you know, try to make everything look prettier and, and more professional. It's our heart to do that. Um, but also consider what your skills are and if you would be able to help volunteer your time to, um, you know, offer to help with the website or offer to help design a brochure or get the word out to your local gun shops and see if they're interested. There are many volunteer opportunities um, that that we can really use some help with and that will help us uh, to to bolster our, our public face a little bit better. Um, so we're counting on you guys to do that. And the other thing too is that um, we do have, our website is up, it's holdmyguns.org and there is a, a donation button on there if anyone would be interested in donating. Um, there are many specific things that you can sponsor. It's, um, you know, any, any amount is really appreciated. But if you wanna say, hey, we wanna sponsor your website, we'll make sure that your brand is on our website and, and make sure that you get credit for that. If you want to sponsor a community day, let us know and we'll connect you with a gun shop who can help, you know, help stock the shelves at the food bank or whatever. We're open to hearing those kinds of ideas. If you know someone who would like to um, speak in one of our gun shops, let us know. We want to be connected with speakers. One other thing I want to mention um, before I open it up to questions is that we have decided to put forth a, uh, a like a podcast or a, a video blog um, type thing. And as I'm talking about the guest speakers who can come and speak in shops, what we want to do in this podcast is to um, bring some of those guest speakers on so that everyone can hear them and ask questions from uh, a liberty lifestyle perspective and get encouragement in the areas that that they need. Um, this was also really important to us being in this uh, time of the coronavirus. We know people need some positive encouragement and that's that's a big part of what we want to do. Um, and the other thing we want to do is to be able to interview our gun shop owners and learn more about them and learn more about their communities too. So those are the types of guests to um, expect to see on our show and we're really excited about that so um anyway genevieve 
<laughs> There's a lot of big things happening, guys. And I mean, Sarah and I have been so excited to talk about all of this with all of you. Uh, it's been really hard not to <laughs> get on here before now and, you know, tell everybody the good news. But just to reiterate what you're saying, I mean, we recognize this is a really difficult time for people right now. And I hope that by launching, this gives some people some positivity and some hope, just like it's doing for the both of us. And you know, we're just so excited to start actually making a difference, and we hope that you guys want to get involved so we can all do this together and we can all have that sense of purpose, especially in such a hard time. And I just want to say, you know, I'm so proud of everything that Sarah's done. I really am. It, she's worked like so hard on this, and you know, she's very concerned about being too proud of herself in a time like this. But I really just want to mention that, like, you are one of the most incredible people I know. I'm so honored to be your best friend. And I'm so excited to be doing this with you. And I think we're going to make a really big difference. And I'm just really proud. I'm really proud of you, too. My cheeks just turned red. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. <laughs> oh, you did it. That means you I'm, I'm really grateful for you, too, and your encouragement on this, and uh, it, it just means the world to me, and I appreciate the expertise that you bring to this as well. Um, I, I couldn't do it without you and, and the rest of our team. Um, I'm just really thrilled, and I'm also really grateful for all of our friends out there um, who have been supported, supportive of us. It was really heartbreaking to um, hear the announcement about um, the NRA annual meeting being canceled, and then the the um, the gun collective panel, and then Gunathon. We had we had plans to go to those events, and we love seeing people. So I we understand it's for a good reason, but um, you know we had to regroup after that. And I I just I'm sending a big hug to everybody right now because we we've missed seeing you, and um, I'm excited to be moving forward together on on this project. It's very important. I agree. If anybody has any questions, throw them up in the chat and I'll make sure to read them out too. Uh, TJ says that he'll speak. Put me on your list, he says. Cool. And, TJ's and a great guy. Tell us about TJ. Why would, what would, what would he be able to, we're putting TJ on the spot. What would he be able to <laughs> encourage you? And we love TJ. So TJ is really awesome and I've asked if I could say this um, on camera before and he said yes, which is the only reason I'm doing it, but he struggles with mental health in his own right. And I think that it's really important to get a male voice and a male perspective on mental health because that almost has more of a stigma in certain cases than, you know, when, when we were talking about mental health. I think it's a lot harder for, for guys, especially in the gun community, to open up about things like that. So I think that TJ just has such a great passion for that and is so open and kind it would really make a big difference to a lot of people and and he's has served many tours yeah in the military and so it's it's not simply just someone who's a snowflake <laughs> and he's just like everything is terrible like he's he really has been through a lot and he has had to regroup and and we just love him and um genevieve go ahead he's it's his, he's TJ, but how can we find him online if people want to follow him? Lead Sling and Ginger. <laughs> yes. That's a hard one to forget. They do a, actually one of our uh, team members, Kent Hauer, and him do a podcast every Monday. Uh, they have some pretty quality content on there, so you can check that out too. They do. Looks like Chris have, has a question. You want to read that for us? Absolutely. Will there be a list of partners and states listed on the website? Yes. Take that? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can quick find it. Um, I have a list of the the states. That, sorry, uh -oh. a list of the states. It's all, the whole room's gonna fall apart. She's so excited. Um, She's just flinging stuff everywhere. <laughs> I know. We have FFLs um, who have expressed an interest in Pennsylvania, Arizona, Colorado, California, New Jersey, Nevada, Michigan, Illinois, North Carolina. Kansas, Vermont, Texas, Georgia, and Florida. So we're, that's a fun start. And again, I, I know that these are difficult times and not all of the gun shops who previously reached out to us, they might not be open right now, but we want to get the ball rolling rather than waiting for everything to be up and running 100% um, because of the coronavirus. So looks like we have a couple more questions in there. Can you scroll and grab those? <laughs> TJ says, I need a safe space. <laughs> 
Uh, cornbread, I'm not saying your real name anymore because you are cornbread now. <laughs> cornbread, yeah. He says uh, most men are, are often... Men are the most often do not speak out. You're right. Very awesome and exciting news. The liberal hunting enthusiast, uh, Elise, she's a good friend of ours. She says someday if we ever get our business going, we'd love to be a partner. That would be wonderful. Ghost Tactical says I could hook you guys up with some in Arkansas if you want. Yes, please. That. Please yes. do. That's all I can see right now. Oh, here's one from Elise, the liberal hunting enthusiast. How could the two local New Hampshire private gun clubs or fish and game clubs get involved to support? We definitely can host events and classes. Very I mean, cool. that, would, that would be awesome. Obviously, once all of this stuff settles down uh, with the virus and things get relatively back to normal, which we're aware could be quite a few months from now. Um, but we would love to talk to you about doing something like that. And we, we really do want to celebrate this idea because bringing awareness to suicide and suicide prevention, it should be a happy thing, right? Lead by example, yeah. give something. Like, yes. Exactly, yes. So we do want to host events like we talked about previously. And that is something that in the future, we still can see happening. It just needs to be a little bit later in the future now. Yes. And and so just to, to go further on Elise's question, um, the first question would be is if they have an FFL and they would want to do storage. Um, and then she was talking about holding events. That's wonderful, too. And I, I want to point out that not all of our FFLs have a storefront. Not all of them have. Um, and if they do, not all of them have a larger storefront or classroom space. And so part of, you know, when we have that community survey, we want to ask about uh, meeting rooms that may be available in their community that they can utilize or even put up a tent in a parking lot. Um, our goal is to be able to have events and to get the word out and not just simply have sponsors in the firearms community, but also local sponsors as well. So maybe um, hardware stores, um, you know, local um, businesses. We want to be able to create a community event because um, helping with suicide prevention is something that the whole community can participate in. So um, by letting us know, by, by filling out that survey that we'll be sending out to our FFL partners, um, we'll get a better idea of, of what events could look like in their community and to learn more about those specific needs. If anyone is interested in becoming a storage partner, um, email us at info at holdmyguns.org and let us know that you have an interest and tell us a little bit about your shop and we'll make sure that you're included in that mailing on Friday. Mina says, is there a Hold My Guns GoFundMe page? I'd be happy to make some donations. Sarah, has the, the website uh, changed since we updated it? It has. So um, once we got our nonprofit status, we were able to qualify for a charity version of the GoFundMe. Um, and they, but they do take a percentage off that is a little bit high. And so if you go to um, holdmyguns.org, the donate button there actually goes to our new nonprofit PayPal. And that of all of this, the donation type services is one that um, takes out the least amount of uh, fees. So the best place to do that is again, our charity uh, PayPal. And, um, and that's, you can find that on our website, holdmyguns.org through the donate button there. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your interest in donating. It really helps us out so much. Uh, Keystone Freedom says, I can help out with future events in the Pittsburgh area. That's fantastic. Thank you. That is. The, the outpouring of support is just miraculous. Like, the, the gun community as a whole just continues to amaze me every single day in, in so many facets of life. And I'm just, I'm so grateful to be a part of it. I really me too. am. <laughs> me too. And it's important to me to be offering... Um, a solution that is for gun owners by gun owners and um, to really be um, answering this need from within our own community and not expecting other people to take care of these concerns. All right, what else is, what else is up there? That's Corby all I can see for right now. Okay, what's, what's Corey saying? You just put a number up. Does he, is there a context for that? I don't have, I can't see that one on my side. Okay. okay if you can see it, can you read it out, Sarah? Yeah, Corbeard, he said, um, text CNQR at 741-741 or call 800-273-8255. Is that, oh, that's, I think that's the suicide prevention number. I'm not 100% sure. Okay. But. Maybe he can clarify in the comments. <laughs> 
Corey. Yeah. We need information. We have questions. <laughs> it was it was amazing to meet Corey at Shot Show this year and to check out the Right on Optics booth. That was incredible, and and to meet the team there. Um, and uh, we're we're really grateful for that it was great to meet our friends at SB Tactical. That was my first time meeting everyone there. So, again, we're just missing people that um, we would normally be seeing at events right now. But yeah, our love to all of you guys. I think everybody so, is feeling pretty similarly about yeah. that. Which there is some solidarity solidarity in that for me at least. <laughs> yes. Um, I also want to point out too, like you're talking about the wonderful community that we have. Um, as we launch and we put up um, our partners on the website, if you um, if you need a storage service but there's not a location near you, let us know and we can reach out to the community and see if we can connect you with a gun shop who's able to do firearm storage. Oh, I just got like seven comments pop up at the same time. My Wi-Fi must be slow outside. <laughs> Corbeard says it's a text line and a call line. So I'm assuming if you're struggling, please write that number down. Give them a text if you want to. You can always reach out to Sarah and I online as well. We'd be more than happy to chat with you. Uh, we have another question. What's the best way for a private citizen not in the gun industry to help out? That's a great question. There's a, there's a lot of possible ways to answer it. The first thing is just to offer financial support. That's really important. Um, a, a long time ago, I, I um, I'm, well, I'm, I'm backing into this a little bit weird, but I, um, like my family was really not doing well financially. And so it was always an embarrassment for me to ask for money. <laughs> and so that really is my heart. I really struggled to, to say um, funding is a thing. However, um, I, what I've learned in launching Hold My Guns is that it is truly a way that people can participate in the cause and that it's not just, it, it's not about the money. It's about how can we work together and it's, it's a way for them to participate in the cause. So that is, that's the first thing, um, you know, the highest need there is to be able to, to fund what we want to do to make the website nice and accessible and keep every keep the lights on that kind of a thing um the other thing is if you have a business it doesn't have to be in the firearms industry but um if this is a community effort and so if you have a business that is might not be in the firearms industry but you'd be able to sponsor us um that would be wonderful or to work with your local gun shop and say hey we want to do this program um can we help you with a launch party when we're able to do a launch party? Um, we'll, we'll sponsor the food and drinks, you know, or um, we'll, if you're, you know, a local, uh, I don't know, what would be a good example? Like if you're a local fill in the blank, uh, a local car. Happened. There we go. Um, Everybody got to see my gorgeous yeah. car. <laughs> nice. um, let's, let's say you work at a local car dealership. You might say, go. See, I <laughs> let's, let's put out our our 2020 line in the parking lot and people can check out the new vehicles and go in and learn more about hold my guns and the offerings at, at the gun shop so we are excited to be creative about ways that other businesses can participate in hold my guns and to sponsor it because again it's a, it's a community effort and we want to make sure that you're recognized for your um, role in this as well absolutely that was a great question and getting the word out, sharing things, that's an easy way that anybody can can help. Absolutely. I think that's – questions have slowed down quite a bit. <laughs> okay. Well, it was really wonderful to see everybody today. And, uh, Absolutely. Great to see you, Genevieve. We haven't seen each other in person for a couple of weeks, even though we live fairly close together. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to um, – really the whole whole country feeling better and yeah. to be able to get back to more um, regular everyday life. So I agree. Solidarity. We're all in it together. And We're all in it together. That's a theme. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for listening today, everybody. Uh, it was really wonderful questions and, and thank you always for your support. Really appreciate that. And I, I truly believe that together we can help prevent suicide and, uh, I'm excited. Yeah. Me too. So, so thankful. You guys are awesome. Much love to all of you. Much love. All right. We'll be in touch, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.